Good evening, Pio Nation. I hope you're doing well this evening. My name is Matt Williamson, and you're watching Married Ecology Sports. So tonight, we have the Rainbow Six match of all Rainbow Six match. We have Married Ecology going up against Butler University in Collegiate R6. What a classic Rainbow Six match for you. The Pioneers have gone up against Butler numerous times, and they are the official rivals of the Rainbow Six team. It has been back and forth with a lot of games going all the way to Game 3 overtime. So we will see how tonight's match fares. Uh, we've already taken care of the map picks and bands. Uh, we're getting everything set up in the lobby. So while we're doing that, uh, let's take a look at who will be actually playing in our Rainbow Six match tonight. Uh, so we have, in alphabetical order, we have Junior Austin Amash Frenzy. We have our Captain Senior Vincent Anderson Duggo. We have the fan favorite on Twitch, Junior Aaron Crumb Spoon. We have Sophomore Michael Funka Funka. And we have Senior Dylan Polsrez. And we have our coaches, Derek Games, our head coach of the, the esports program. And our Rainbow Six coach, Matt Argabrey. The RAS, this is Collegiate R6. Which does mean a couple of things, folks. So first of all, uh, we will not be able to do the overhead spectate like we can do in NACE matches. That is because Collegiate R6 has some rules such as you cannot be an observer of a match if you're in the same building as the other team, as your team. Well, I'm in the same building as my team. They're just right. The only thing that stands between me and the team is the door. So we're not going to be able to do that. Uh, we do have a tool called NDI set up with OBS so we can view uh, all the players. I think it's working. We will find out. So we've had some technical difficulties with some of our matches throughout the week. Uh, but it seems like everything is looking good. We might have some latency here and there as we swap. But uh, we should be able to, to see all that just fine. Also, because it is a Rainbow Six match, you know that my knowledge in this game is severely, severely limited. Uh, but I will do my best to try to explain what's going on, what the Pioneers are thinking, and what they're doing. Or we'll just sit back, relax, and just enjoy the, the match that is about to come. But while we're waiting for that, uh, let's go over a couple of announcements and reminders. So first of all, I do want to give a shout out to our uh, partners with HyperX for providing uh, peripherals for our esports program. We're talking about keyboards, mice, headsets, mouse pads, microphones. They are amazing. Our students love them. So we definitely want to give a thanks to HyperX uh, for providing all that for us. If you would like your own HyperX gear, uh, you can definitely go to uh, hyperx.gg slash Marietta Esports. The QR code is up on your screen. I believe there is a sale going on right now until about mid-October. So that sale may be ending very soon. Also want to give a shout out to our supporters at Over the Moon Pizza on Front Street in Marietta. Uh, they do game nights every now and then uh, at their uh, restaurant on Front Street. And I believe the next one is going to be on Tuesday, October 18th. Uh, they're going to be having... Uh, some more switches and joy cons they're going to be showcasing our matches we will be having some live matches there on that tuesday uh, so we definitely recommend you go check it out we'll have more details uh, once those are finalized uh, we're also in the middle of a fundraising campaign uh, as part of the married college virtual stadium sellout so this is an opportunity to help raise funds to support all varsity athletic programs at married college and esports is considered a varsity program here at Marietta College. So how could you help support the esports program? Well, you can go to givecampus.com slash QHZGZI. The QR code is up on your screen as well. And you can make a gift of any amount. Uh, no gift is too big or too small. Just make sure under the designation that you do select esports. And we do want to thank everyone who has been able to contribute and help towards our program. So what does your gift do for our program? What, do we, what are we trying to do? Well, first of all, we are trying to get more computers for our facility. We are at about 40 students in the program, which is the largest in program history, but we're gonna need some more computers to accommodate all of the, uh, the students that we have. We just got a couple of computers in today, so we are gonna get them configured. We're gonna get them set up so that our students use them. And we'll definitely put it out on social media. So thank you for prior gifts because that's where we're able to 
uh, get the funds to get those computers. So thank you so much for allowing our students to have that. Uh, but we're definitely looking to try to get a couple more so we can accommodate even more students at the same time. Uh, we're also planning on trying to travel to more events. Uh, now we're starting to see more land events happening. Uh, we're starting to see more local tournaments. Uh, and of course, it, there is a travel cost to that. So we would like to be able to give our students the opportunity to travel to those events. So your uh, gifts will help make that happen. And we're also hoping to try to do some of our own events uh, on campus. Uh, so we're already partnering with Interfraternity Council to do a, a tournament in November. Uh, we're going to be looking at trying to do some additional events. So your gifts can help uh, make that happen as well. So yeah, any amount that you can uh, contribute would be greatly appreciated. But if you're not able to uh, make a gift, help spread the word. Uh, let people know that we are we exist, that we're trying to, to do a variety of things for our teams. We have all sorts of matches coming up. So any way of spreading word of mouth can definitely help with that. Uh, speaking of events that's coming up, uh, we're going to take a look at the schedule here. Now, this is the current week's schedule, and there's going to be quite a few things that go on next week, and I'll get that out uh, as soon as possible. Uh, but tomorrow, uh, we will have our League of Legends team go up against Trine. I will mention that our re uh, Valorant match against Trine has been rescheduled for Monday at 7 o'clock. Uh, so just letting you know that is going to be happening. But this weekend will be a lot of Fortnite. If you are a Fortnite fan, I have good news for you because our Fortnite team is going to be competing at Saturday at 3 o'clock and Sunday at 3 o'clock. Now, for the Saturday match, we'll be streaming our League of Legends match first, and then we'll try to stream what's left over of the Fortnite competition. But on Sunday, we'll be streaming all Fortnite uh, during the Nay Star League uh, Collegiate Fortnite Qualifier Open Split 1 Open something. It's going to be a lot of Fortnite. Four games of Fortnite each day, so definitely check that out. Next week, we're going to have a lot going on as well. Because not only will we have our uh, Valorant team playing, but our Overwatch team will be debuting. Uh, so on Tuesday, they'll be playing against Northern Kentucky University at 7 o'clock. And then we'll also have some Rainbow Six going on. We're going to have some Val more Overwatch and Rainbow Six and more Valorant. So yeah, we're going to have something going on just about every day uh, next week. So definitely want to check that out. Uh, another way you can also help support is by following on our social media channels, whether it's here on Twitch or Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. So those follows can definitely help with spreading the word. And also we want to thank everyone who's uh, provided a subscription to our Twitch channel. Um, it does help support our program. But if you don't have the funds to um, provide a subscription, if you have Amazon Prime, then of course there is Prime Gaming. Uh, a very simple way to help financially support the esports program at no extra cost to you. Uh, so all you have to do is just create a free Twitch account and then you go to gaming.amazon.com and click on Try Prime and then connect your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. And then of course you can come here and you can click on this, that subs uh, subscribe button and then check the little box that says use your Prime Gaming sub. And what do you get by subscribing to our channel? Well, you get instant access to our VODs. Uh, we stream all of our uh, matches here, of course. We do put them up on YouTube shortly after, but it may take a little bit of time. It depends on how long it takes for me to get them processed, which reminds me, I should probably get some of the matches from earlier this week processed. So, yeah, I'll work on that after this match. But if it takes longer than expected to get the, uh, the those matches up on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel here, and you get instant access to those VODs. So you can check them out right away. You also get access to our custom Married at College emotes. Uh, so you can see all your expressions there. Now, it looks like the game is started up. Uh, we are going to be doing Clubhouse first. So let's get over to the game here. Oh, I thought I hit the right button, but I always like the little cool transition here, but I always forget to do that. But anyway, uh, this is... We're starting up Marietta College versus Butler University. We are in Clubhouse. Marietta will be attacking first and defending in overtime. And it looks like we're going to see the Havana van? That's a very interesting pick. Yes, very, very interesting. And Marietta's going to be banning the Flores. They do not like that Flores. Very annoying to go up against. But that does mean that ops like Jackal and Thatcher are up in play. We usually see those banned quite often. 
So it's going to be interesting how Marion will utilize that. Marion is going to take away the Mira. So now we'll see what will be Butler's uh, off a defensive ban. I should mention while we're getting all this set up. Um, so of course, first map is going to be Clubhouse Marion attacks. Second map is going to be Theme Park. Marietta still attacking first. And I actually missed the band there. It kind of like faded out for me, but yeah, it's going to be the nope. Uh, but yeah, very interesting. So we got the, I'm looking at very small screens here, folks. That's why it's all kind of getting a little iffy for me. But all right, so Marietta will be joining in. As a reminder, we are not going to be able to see the overhead uh, spectator view. And I think the game audio is just a little wonky, so we're going to have to just live with that. We'll see if it's any better if I try a different perspective. Seems a little quiet to me. I'm sure you guys probably feel the same way. Let me see if I can up the audio a little bit here. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can fix the uh, audio a little bit so it's a little bit louder for you guys. Maybe that's a little too much. All right, there we go. That should be a little bit better. And it looks like there's some issues. They're already calling for a rehost. Yeah, I'm not so sure what happened there, but it looks like a rehost uh, was called. Yeah, so it looks like the lobby is just going to have to be recreated. And I'm going to try to see if I can get a better view in some of these uh, matches or some of these perspectives. I'm trying to watch five different screens at the same time. So sometimes it's not as easy to tell exactly what's going on. But we will get this game underway somehow. It just may take a little bit before we get the, the lobby recreated. I'm going to try to tweak a couple things here. See if I can kind of make the uh, settings a little bit better here. Audio still seems a little on the quiet side. Let me. That's a little bit better. All right. So I'm just checking all the audio settings. So we're just going to run through here. I'm going to do an audio check live with you guys. All right. Let's see. How's the audio here? All right. Okay, how's the audio here? They're getting the lobby set up with this so they don't have the game going up here just yet. Let's check here. Okay, that should be a little bit better. And then the last one. I think we're not be getting a lot of audio from the last one here. And it's actually really choppy here too. All right. So I'll tell you what, we're gonna, I'm going to take a very small break while we are getting everything set up and getting people invited. It should we should be back in just actually no wait no never mind I'm not going to take a break because we're getting everyone back in here, so we should be getting started uh, very soon.
just trying to figure out what's going on with the uh okay there there that audio seems a little bit better but all right we got everyone back in here so we should be getting this game underway marietta's ready all right let's try this again folks it's still going to be clubhouse marietta's still attacking And we still got all the the bands set up. You need to locate a bomb. Okay. This seems a little bit low here. Let's swap over to another perspective. We're gonna swap over uh to res here i think the uh the fps is a little bit better on here Operators have been set. So it looks like we're going to see the Iona Thermite and a few others that are new to me. So this is going to be very interesting and see how this goes. So, once again, because it is Collegiate R6, we're only going to be able to see the perspectives from the players just to try to preserve uh, integrity. But I'll try to swap over whenever I see something happens. But we see Rez kind of droning around. Meanwhile, we see Funk is going to be breaching from the back. And just slowly working towards the, the back tunnel. Not gonna spot anyone yet. Meanwhile, Spoon's gonna be roaming over, but looks like he's gonna rotate out from the kitchen. And he's taking some shots. Returned some gunfire, but I don't know if any of it connected. And Funka is gonna get taken down during all that. And Frenzy's gonna get taken down as well. is going to catch the gunfire. He's going to be looking at throwing a grenade. Doesn't get anyone starts shooting. But Nago is going to get taken down. Minute three remains in the round. And of course, everyone gets picked off before I get a chance to see. But Spoon's going to get knocked down. Not out yet, but I don't think Rez is going to be in a position to revive him. So Rez is the only one remaining. He does spot one over by the lounge, but he's going to get taken down. And Butler will take the first round. So we'll see how the Pioneers will respond. So right now we see the Thermite and Monte knock Nomad and Thatcher, but of course that can change. Need to use your drone to locate a bomb.
We see just trying to get drones in a good spot for extra vision. Ten seconds before insertion. Five seconds before insertion. A bomb must be located and defused. Okay, round has begun. So we're gonna see Nago on the Monty this time. We're just going to be going in there to, to scout around. And Spoon's going to be dropping, looks like a Claymore. You don't necessarily see it on your, your screen. But we do see some possible gunfire. Spoon is running around, not seeing anything. Meanwhile, we see Nuggo on the Monty spotting out one op and trying to use use the Monty to bait him out for Funka. It doesn't look like they're gonna get much out of it. Meanwhile, Rez is checking the high CCTV. Meanwhile, we see Spoon rotating around. But Nuggo is going to fall and so will Spoon. And Funk is going to take him down. So... And Butler is just able to collapse on the Pioneers. To try something that might help with the performance. Alright, we see Rez is swapping over to Thermite. Ten seconds before insertion. Five seconds to go. Your mission is to locate and defuse a bomb. Okay, so Falco's going to be working his way up. So it seems like they are going to be heading over towards Jim's bedroom where they suspect the, uh, the bomb. Falco's checking to see if anyone's peeking by. But we see Red's going to be trying to breach out the, uh, the doorway. Maybe looking for the next doorway, trying to allow the breach to take place. Well, 
They do get through open, they do see it's blocked with a castle wall. And they do detect the mute as well. And Rez is going to get a great headshot. Well, Funk is checking topside, see if anyone is coming by. Spoon's going to work his way onto the gym side. Not going to catch anyone. Checking over by a pool table. Didn't see anyone there. You know, Nago's going to be brought out the Hayana and it does get taken out while going down the hatch. You know, Frenzy's going to be still checking by CTTV to see if there's any flanks. So the minute five remains in the round. Pioneers need to start entering. Funk is checking the, the workshop. Sees the gunfire. 45 seconds remain. And Funk is able to take out one, but Rez will fall. And so will Spoon. But Nuggo's going to get a refrag. Funk takes out one, so there's only one left. Funk will be checking the stairs. Puts down the Claymore. Puts down two Claymores. But they're going to have to either find this person quickly or they need to go plant that Diffuser. And Frenzy does get taken down. Nuggo is working on planting the Diffuser and does get it planted. Questions, can they hold? Funka does hear the gunfire, but I don't see it. Time is over halfway through. And Funk is able to catch him, and Mary is on the board. select some ops but once again they can swap things up spoon may be looking at the jackal Their droning. Let's see what they can spot. And they spot a Capkin. That's going to be interesting with those extra traps, so they're going to have to be extra careful against it. Taking out the cameras. Converging over by the back entrance, checking for any peaks. Bump is going to be checking for any peaks. Rest is droning, and so is Nago. Let's 
Lines have been used to try to spot anyone. Does spot one. Nuggle on the Monty, but Spoon and Red do get taken down from the opposite side. Renzi does pick up the Fuser, but has to fall back. Falk is going to take down one, but Frenzy is going to get taken down, and Butler is able to collapse on the rest of the Pioneers. So just the, the droning phase at this point. The round has begun. So we're going to see Funko repelling his way up to the top. The spoon's not too far behind either. Actually, he's ahead of him, to be fair. And so is Frenzy. Checking for any peaks. Tonka and Spoon are going to be droning. Nugger's going to use the Monty to work his way in. Think of it as a live version of a drone. But Funk is going to get picked off, get caught on the stairs. to scout around me while Spoon's gonna be his drone's gonna get caught by mute and Nuggo is gonna take down one looking for another but both Spoon and Rez fall but Nuggo with the melee hit but it's still a 2v3 but Frenzy's gonna get a headshot but Nuggo's gonna fall. Frenzy's last one standing, already at half health. And he will fall, and a butler will take the next round. So Butler is up four to one.
Now let's get started, take out cams. Snooker's gonna drone. Meanwhile, Spoon's gonna be working top side. Rez is gonna be looking to breach the wall. It does get the breach. Here we go. I think that was just trying to lure anyone out and no one really fell for it. So meanwhile they're gonna be looking to breach the back wall over here by Jim Bedroom. Funk is checking some spots. Frenzy will use his cameras. That was spot one. Grass is checking the breach wall in the back. Just take, taking her time for trying to infiltrate the facility. Minute 25 remains, and I don't think anyone has made it inside yet. And Rez is going to get taken down, and so will Funka. But Nuggo is going to get a frag with a grenade. Looking for two, but he's going to fall. Spoon is caught in a lot of smoke. Got in a gunfire back and forth. Next smoke does come out. And Frenzy's gonna take out one, so this may be Spoon's opportunity to peek. Tries to get a hit, but he takes a lot of damage himself. He's down just so low. Frenzy's gonna fall, so Spoon's the only one that's remaining. I don't think there's much he can do with this considering how low health he is. He's just gonna get picked off as he enters. So Butler took five of the six rounds on offense, so now Marietta will be well Marietta's on offense, so now Marietta will be on defense, and we'll see if things go a little bit better. So we're going to see Castle, Smoke, Jaeger, Echo, and Kaede. The Echo pick is interesting. He was not banned during the, uh, the ban phase. So we'll see if they're going to be able to utilize that Echo very well. Gone. They got the, the barrier electrified. Funk is checking garage. Using the cameras to see where Butler is infiltrated from. And we're here in the attempted breach. And Rez is going to spot one, but Leap deals some damage, but he's going to get taken out. Rez is going to be peeking the stairs. He's going to see that the, one, the, hat, the, the door has been breached. The 
But Spoon's gonna get one. And Funk is gonna get one from the garage. Take back up minute 25 still rings around. Pioneers are up four to three. Let's check the window, did not see anyone there. Does spawn someone over by the, the door though. But he's gonna get picked off. Funk is going to get picked off as well. With 35 seconds remain. It's just Nuggo and Frenzy. Nuggo throws out the smoke. Throws out the second smoke. He's going to throw his last smoke. 13 seconds remain. And he's going to get picked off, so... Frenzy's the last one remaining. And Diffuser does get planted, but he does get picked off as well. And Butler will take the round. So it is map point for Butler. Marina is going to have to find some way to, to claw her. They're going to have to find a way to get back into this. Um, I don't know if it's just the gunfights that the pro is the problem. I don't know if it's the angles, but it just seems like they're getting caught and picked off. Drones. She got defenses. Is slowly roaming by pool table. Takes out a drone. It's gonna have to fall back. Now Rez is holding the bomb site. Spoon's also gonna be roaming. And Funko's gonna take down one. Funk is going to get taken out from vertical. I was just guarding one of the bomb sites. Frenzy's checking cams. And Spoon's going to get taken down.
Now we start seeing Butler reaching in. Butler is definitely trying to play the vertical game. Res does fall, so it's just Frenzy and Nugga that's left. And we're definitely getting some FPS lag here from NDI. Frenzy's gonna get picked off, so Nugga's the only one remaining, and he ends up falling as well. So Butler will take the first map. But yeah, that was just a very strong performance uh, by Butler. But yeah, I think a lot of it was just uh, getting caught. Um, I noticed that Butler had a lot of headshots in their gunfights, so I mean, definitely the accuracy can play a role there. Uh, getting caught were in different picks, but I mean, overall, I mean, Butler played a very good game. Uh, so the next map I'm checking here is going to be uh, Theme Park with Marietta attacking. I will note that Butler did choose Clubhouse, and Marietta did get to choose Theme Park. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break as we get things set up for the, the second map. And we'll be back in just a minute.
All right, and welcome back. We are getting things set up for game two. Uh, this is going to be theme park, and we're already in, so let's get in there ourselves. So Marietta will be attacking once again first. So we'll see what kind of bands come up. Will be the, be the same bands? Will it be something different? So this time, Butler's going to take out the Flores. So Marietta will this, use this opportunity. It looks like they're going to get rid of the knock. Yeah, so they'll get rid of the, the knock and Marriott is looking to get rid of the Kaid. We'll see what Butler's last band will be. And it's going to be the Mira. All right, so Marius Ops are set. Looking at maybe Thatcher and Dokopi this time. Along with the Thermite, Zopia, and Buck. But of course, they can change as uh, they get some more intel. Need to locate a bomb. Just as a reminder, uh, we are going to have to watch through NDI just because Collegiate R6 rules do not allow us to be a spectator or an overhead spectator if we're in the same building as the, the players. And we are. So that's why we're using NDI. And of course, it can be glitchy at times where. A little bit of audio issues or some, some lag issues. We're going to make the best we can. Uh, we are also on a five minute delay. Just that way there is no potential stream sniping. Okay, it looks like the operators are set. So interesting that we're going to see... The Doka B from, uh, from Frenzy. Reload. He is rotating around. It looks like uh, Funka is going to be trying to infiltrate, see if it's clear. Doesn't look like anyone is there. Oh, Spoon's going to be rotating along the other side. And Funka's going to get taken out. But Spoon's going to get the refrag. But Spoon's going to get picked off. And so will Frenzy, so it's just Nuggo and Rez that remain. So Rez is trying to join up the stairs. Nago gets picked off, so Rez is the only remaining. One minute is left. And Rez is going to get caught and picked off.
Alright, ops are set. Should be beginning soon. We're getting a little bit of of lag, it looks like. So we're gonna swap over to Funkus since he is gonna be in the jackal and see how that plays a role uh, in this round. Looks like Funkus Spoon and Frenzy are gonna be. Entry one side, checking to make sure it's clear, droning in. Doesn't look like anyone was there, so trying to see if anyone has walked by. And he is going to spot, but there is a mute jammer nearby. But he's able to get some intel on the alibi. Flashbang is going to be coming out. Let's pull back. And Frenzy is going to get taken down. Looks like Funko has been pinged. But he's able to take down one. Looking to get a huge hit, but not enough to finish him off. But Spoon is going to fall. Rez is going to get a great headshot, so it's a 3v3, minute 17 remains. Both Noga and Rez are repelling down. Falka's over by the bomb site, doesn't have the defuser. And Falka's able to take down another. But Rez is going to fall. So it's just Nago and Funka 2v2 in this matchup. Funka's going to check once, so only one remains. Going to use that Jackal to spot the last person. But Nago is going to get knocked out, but Funka's going to get the kill, and Marietta takes the round. Great use of the Jackal play to spot the last person, anticipating going to come by that door and get the round. So yes, folks, the Jackal did make a difference in that round. round has begun. See Funk is still on that Jackal. Uh, this time we'll swap over the Spoon on the Nomad. Mm 
Good job. I did spot someone. It spots out the Jaeger. But Funk is already going to get taken down. Let's see where that Jaeger is. It's getting kind of pinned in this gunfire. So Nogo's going to be re repelling up top. Or climbing up top, technically. You don't repel up. Goes trying to breach through. You know, Rez is climbing up top along with Spoon. A minute ten remains in the round. Rez is going to be peeking through. Flashbang comes out for Spoon, but Nago's going to fall, and so will Spoon and Rez. I'm sorry, just no good spoon, not res. Res is still up. So that flashbang did not work in their favor. Thirty seconds remain in the round. seconds remain and they're just not able to find any of Butler uh, never mind Butler found Rez and Frenzy took him out and claimed the round Just getting their drones in position. Showing a check is pretty much breaking down that wall. Well, it's not really a wall, it's just a barricaded entrance. Right now, Mary's trying to do a lot of drone checking for openings. Spoon and Frenzy might be caught in a gunfight, but Spoon's going to be dropping down. Funk is slowly working his way in. Drone active. 
This is gonna be droning. Frenzy using that shield. But he's gonna get exploded. Hunker takes some hits. He's able to deal some damage himself, but a little low on health, so he's gonna have to be a little cautious. Spoon gets taken out. And so will Funka. And Butler takes another round. Right now, Butler is up 3-1, and a lot of that was just getting caught in the gunfights. Like, Mary was trying to get the intel that they needed. But it seemed like Mary was just getting caught off guard and getting picked off one by one. Is working his way up. Meanwhile, Spoon's also going to be climbing up. Hunk is going to start with the lower level, rotating around to see if anyone is nearby. And Frenzy is going to get caught by an explosion. Funk is going to get taken down. Check if anyone's walking by there. Spoon is going to catch that someone is by. Frenzy does get taken down. This is going to drone spots him out. Tries to go for the engage. Uses the light into trying to catch him, but Spoon's going to fall. And Rez is already at half health. So it's just Nago and Rez. A minute eight remains. And everyone in Butler is still alive, but Nugga Rez will fall, and Butler takes another round. So Butler is up 4-1. to one. They only need uh, three more rounds to secure the match.
insertion in five seconds. You must so we have our ops. Rest is going to continue the drone to see if anyone runs by. Monk is already working his way into the bathroom. Francie's along with him. Put down the spikes. And Funk has already been taken down. And so is Nugo. And just with that, Baller has been able to pick off the Pioneers by one, one by one, just catching them. Take out a camera. He's probably been spotted. He does get a good hit. Takes out one grenade, but not able to take out the other. And it gets flanked from the side, and Butler takes the round. But yeah, Butler is just winning the gunfights hands down. And they're holding angles that makes it really difficult for Marietta to peek. So whenever they walk by, Butler's just able to get the advantage. But now Marietta is on defense, but they have to pretty much win out. Butler only needs two more rounds and they'll take the series. So the round has begun. We're just finishing up getting the alibi clones ready. Well, Falca is rotating around along with Frenzy, trying to catch him up by the stairs. Well, Nuggo's just going to be holding the the bomb site. Spoons checking cameras. Funka is in a gunfight by the stairs. Let's see Butler is able to breach that wall. We're going to take some damage by the arcade. Funk is able to get one. Oh, 
is going to spot by the window. I don't know if any of those shots connect. 43 seconds remain in the round. So can the Pioneers hold? Rez is going to fall. But Spoon and Funka both get kills. So now it's a 4v2. Nago is extremely low in health, though. 30 seconds remain. Frenzy is able to take down one, so there's only one operator left for Butler. And Frenzy is going to be able to get the kill, and Marietta gets the round. It's still an uphill battle for the Pioneers, but that does help close the gap. And Frenzy's looking at the Azami this time. And Spoon's going to be playing Vigil, looking to do some extra roaming. Secure the bombs. So we're going to watch Spoon on this one, on this vigil, and see how he plays it. See, Spoon's going to be spotting a, a, a drone. So he's going to use a grenade to take that out. He's going to hear him coming in. going to be rotating around. Nago is looking into a, a fight. But Spoon's going to fall and so will Nago. Okay, Rez are holding some doors. Everyone's holding some angles. But this is a 5v3. Butler is in a favorable position here with the minute 23 remaining. And Funk is going to get taken down. And Rez gets taken down, so Renzi's the only one that's left. And he's going to get concussed. Renzi takes out one, falls back, but he is going to get taken down. This will be match point for Butler. So Marina's going to have to find some play to get back into the game. Secure the bombs. This time Rez is going to be on the Azami. Five seconds and counting. 
create some extra walls, but the round has begun. This is do or die for the Pioneers. If Butler takes this round, they will take the series. Is gonna be holding the door. Spoons checking cameras. That goes checking angles. So is Frenzy, but he's gonna get picked off. And so will Rez. Gonna be rotating around. Takes out the drone. The Funk is gonna take down one. Nug is gonna be using a smoke already. But he's gonna fall, not gonna be able to get the shot he needs. And Funka has been spotted by the Jackal. Minute 20 remains, it is a 2v4, Butler in favor. Spoon is able to take down one. If Funk is going to fall, Spoon's going to try to take down one. Butler is able to plant the diffuser, so Spoon has to take down the remaining two. And disable the diffuser in order to stay in this match. He does try to do some damage, but he has to, he's gonna have to keep pressing. He knows where they're at, but he does get taken down. And unfortunately, the Pioneers will fall 7-2. to two. So Butler will take the series 2-0. Uh, to zero. So, I mean, that just came down to the gunfights. Um, we saw numerous times where Butler was able to have really good angles. And Marion was not able to spot him out, so when they were roaming around or checking, uh, they were getting picked off, and Butler was winning the gunfights. But congratulations to Butler on their win. So that's going to be it for us for today. So tomorrow, we do have a couple things coming at you. So at 3 o'clock, our League of Legends team will be playing against Trine University, and then immediately following that, we will have uh, the remaining games of our Fortnite competition in Nace Star League. So for all the latest updates with what's going on with Marriott College Esports, please be sure to follow us here on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok. Uh, Shoutouts again to our supporters with HyperX, uh, Over the Moon Pizza, and also shout out to Kovacs for providing uh, keys for our FPS players.